up y'all it's your girl brandy michelle coming at you with another what another review on college hill celebrity edition but before we get started make sure you like share comment and subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on awesome content and awesome reviews like this one well this one right here so yeah let's get into it man when i tell you this has been like the longest week ever. Man, the fact that y'all really got me up here waiting every single week for an episode. Like, how y'all gonna make a show like this and then really make me wait like a whole week to see the new one? I got an app for a reason. I want y'all to load all of it on there at one time so I can just binge watch and, and get my feels and get my thoughts out, you know? But no, y'all won't make me wait a whole week. You got me watching all this unnecessary stuff and all this other nonsense. And why y'all just leave me hanging like that, Be easy Plus? Why y'all do me like that? But that's okay, though. I see what y'all doing. Because the longer you, you know, stretch it out, the more people will see little clips and stuff. And then they'll sign up and get, you know, subscriptions. And then y'all get that coinage. You get the bag. You get the money. I see y'all. It's okay. But, um, yeah. This still was like a real long wait. But that's all right, though, because we're back with a new episode, y'all. We on episode five. We on five. We on Cinco. We on a whole hand. Five fingers. Episode five. I can't believe we're already on episode five. And, like, it feels like it just started. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So, we open up with bright and early everyone's up and at it they're getting ready for school getting their you know morning routine stuff going on and hopefully Lamar has taken care of his morning hygiene I'm just saying I'm just putting it out there because I mean we've already seen evidence of the man not washing his hands I'm just hoping that he does the other really important stuff that you're supposed to do when you first wake up in the morning because if not you need to really sit down and have a talk so everyone's kind of, you know, sitting together and then we see Ray J off to the side by himself. And he seems to be reflecting as he looks at his reflection, reflecting off the water. You know, he's thinking about everything that's going on with his life. He's thinking about these grades that he got, which he really, I mean, I know you went through some stuff, but you kind of deserved it because you weren't really doing what you should have been doing when you should have done what you did. But yeah, you know, he's in his fields and he's having a moment and then Slim goes over to check in with him. And uh, he just mentioned how, you know, he's noticing that, you know, Ray kind of reacted a certain way after he saw his grades and, you know, he's wondering if he's gonna quit cause Ray did kind of say, you know, I quit. So that would kind of make me wonder, dang, I wonder if he gonna quit. Cause he said he was gonna quit, but I wonder if he really gonna quit. You think he gonna quit? So yeah, that's why Slim went over there to see what was going on. Because, you know, I mean, if Ray J does quit, then, I mean, who in the world is he, you know, going to get a good grade from when they have group projects? He needs Ray there. So Ray J admits, you know, he hasn't really been living up to his expectations. He hasn't really been doing what he needs to do. And at this point, he just kind of feels like he's over the whole thing and he's about to make like a banana and split. Like he just don't feel like he can do this no more. And, you know, he admits that um, he's used to doing things his own way on his own time and having people jump when he say jump and do what he say do. And he's not really feeling the going backwards thing and the whole, you know, being disciplined and having to listen to other people. But baby, what you thought was going to happen when you signed up for this? I mean, you thought you were going to get some preferential treatment just because of who you be? Nah, player. This is about the whole college experience. And if you did what you were supposed to have done when you did what you did, then... I don't know. Because really, if they did you right, you wouldn't be up in no really nice house like what you in. If they, I mean, for the whole college experience, you'd be in a little itty bitty shabby $2 dorm room. But they really set you up nice and you up here complaining because all you have to do is show up and do the little assignments that they give you. Like really, you making something so simple, extremely difficult for no reason. Like why? <sighs> so after all this, I'm thinking that he's not gonna even head to school because the last few times when stuff has been going on and you know, he's feeling the ways he hasn't been going, but color me surprised child, he still ended up going to school. 
So everybody went. Thankfully, he pushed through and he went on and everybody went to go meet with the advisors to see what was going to be on the agenda for the week. Week three of school already. Like what? Week three? This is crazy. It's about to be over in a minute. And I'm not ready. I don't want this to be over. Why it gotta be over? I ain't gonna get somebody who's told something and it's just taken away from me like that. Okay, I'm a G. I'm gonna keep it together. I'm gonna be all right. So, week three. And the advisors are asking them how they feel about, you know, everything that's been going on so far and do they feel that they've been doing their best. Some feel like they haven't really been doing their best, but the advisors assure them that it's the halfway mark and they can still turn things around and do better this week and the week after. So they're going to continue with African-American studies. Boy, this instructor is like, look, y'all going to get this African-American studies ex exposure. Y'all going to get this in your life. I don't care what other classes you're taking, but the whole time you here at this HBCU, TSU, you gonna get this education from me, okay? Because they didn't been in here the whole time. It's like the only class they didn't been in the whole duration. You know, like, gee whiz, she got a tight grip on them. She ain't letting them go. So they're gonna continue with African American studies, and they're also gonna add law into the mix. So they head over to the law building, and India mentions her skirt being short. Then, next thing you know, Dream is like, her skirt feels like it's up in the back. Which brings me to this. Why do some people do this? You wear something that you know beyond a reasonable doubt. So like I said that, reasonable doubt. I threw that in there since you know they go into law. But yeah, you know beyond a reasonable doubt that this skirt is way too short or this dress is way too short. Yet you wear this way too short thing out in the street and then you still trying to pull it down like you knew this thing was made for Bobby's little sister skipper when you put it on so why are you trying to pull it down now you know good and well that thing would look better as a bandana on your head why are you trying to pull it down why you can't just west up your side why you <sighs> you know what I'm not gonna even try to figure it out I'm not even trying to figure it out so yeah they walk into the law class and it looks like a courtroom Child, I got the shivers just looking at it. I felt like uh, like the hyenas did in Lion King. Whenever they heard Mufasa, ooh, do it again. That's how I felt looking in that classroom. I was like, ooh, man, this looks like the real thing. I was almost expecting Judge Judy or Judge Lynn Toler to come strolling out there at any minute. So, one of the classmates gets up and starts letting them know what the rules of the classroom are. Now, we know some in this bunch... When it comes to rules and stuff, they're kind of allergic. So this whole thing should be pretty interesting. So the rules of the class are as follows. When Judge Walker walks in, you rise. When she speaks to you, you stand up. And you don't sit down till she tells you. Just look at her as almost like, you know the game Simon says, you gotta do everything Simon tell you to do. When they say do it. And if you don't do it, then you out. So yeah, we gonna look at Judge Walker like, like she, she Simon. So, one thing about it, if nothing else, they don't get nothing else out of this class, they're going to get a good workout in with all that up and down, up and down, up and down. So, yeah, they'll get some cardio. That's a good thing. So, now, we all know how our resident rebel Ray can be when it comes to authority and people telling him, you know, what to do. So, um, we're going to see how this one plays out. Okay. We gonna see how this one gonna go. So judge lady, Miss Ma'am, walks in and she lays down the law straight out the gate. She's like, okay, y'all were in underground. In underground. Child, y'all know what I mean. Don't be looking at me like that. Y'all probably say undergrad like that anyway, because some of y'all country, but that's okay to be country. It's all right to be country. So we just go we just gonna roll on past that, okay? So she said, Y'all were in undergrad, but over here. And Thurgood Marshall School of Law, homie, don't play that. You're not going to come over here with the nonsense, okay? You're going to come over here. You're going to do what you're supposed to do. Or I'm going to throw you into the stocks. Okay, well, she didn't say that. 
but you know the vibe that she was giving was like um if there was a dungeon you know in the back somewhere if they didn't listen that's probably where they were going to end up so then she starts listing the rules the briefs that they have to do will be handwritten no electronic devices are to be used in class that mean no cell phone that mean no laptop that mean no beeper well then again i don't think nobody's still using beepers but then again maybe they are who knows so basically she's just letting them know that she means business and this class is not for play play you gonna come here and do what you're supposed to do homegirl said don't play with her so she asks a question and Ray J just blurts out an answer and she shut that down quick, fast, and in a hurry. She was like, ah, ah. no, no, no. You know, kind of like how mama does a child when they do something they're not supposed to do. She was like, ah, ah, ah. We don't do that. We don't just blurt out. I call on people. And what did Ray J do in that moment? He was like, my bad. Baby, when I tell you my jaw dropped to the floor, that thing stopped, dropped, rolled, went across the room, came back, did a somersault, and then it came back on my face. I couldn't believe it. I just knew he was going to have some words for her, but I, I think Miss Judge Lady Ma'am gave off this air and this energy that was like, homie, you don't want no smoke. Don't you come up in here with that. I will hit you with this gavel. Don't play with me. So, yeah, I think he got it, and um, he pulled it in real quick. So she randomly starts to call on people to answer questions in India's next. And of course, our little sister friend is nervous per usual. But I mean, this is school. You've been here for a while and you should be used to, you know, being called on and having to answer questions and having to talk in front of people by now. Because if you're not used to it by now, then you never, ever, ever will be. Y'all better get into that doo wop pop. Yes, I just gave y'all a whole little concert for free. Yes, run me my coin. Run me my coin. Okay. So Dream answers the question correctly. And then she mentions that the classroom setup reminds her of when her dad got convicted when she was around the age of three. Now that's some kind of memory to have. The last memory of your dad you in the courtroom as a child. Like, ooh. All she remembers is him walking through the doors and not coming back out and it's just amazing how what we endure in our childhood can like influence us as adults you know one way or the other so after you know some more classroom time they find out that they'll be doing a mock trial and this mock trial will be for a police officer who shot and killed a young man while walking down the street I know in, in school, a lot of this stuff is supposed to be like, you know, to help you with real world things. But I don't know the fact that this case was like eerily similar to so many things that we've actually seen in recent years. This hit a little too close to, to home for me. So the fact that they're going to be doing this as a as a mock trial or whatever, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, it made me feel some kind of way. So I know it really, it really hit them because they're the ones that have to do it. So um, each person in a group will have to play a role in the mock trial. You're going to have a jury. Someone has to be the one to try and prove the cop is innocent. And even though we all know the imaginary cop is guilty as the day is long, they still got to do it, you know, quote unquote, innocent until proven guilty, but whatever. They also have to come dressed the part. So... Um, in that moment, uh, Ray J and Miss Judge Lady Ma'am kind of had a, you know, talk about the dress or whatever. And she kind of just broke it down for him. And he was like, okay, so basically they'll judge you by what you wear. And like all of a sudden he had like this light bulb moment. So he was saying it's best to come dressed in a suit as opposed to when a criminal comes out. Or when a person comes out, I don't call him a criminal. But when a person comes out in an orange jumpsuit, it's like they already they automatically see criminal and they already convict you before they even have a chance to hear what's really going on so in that moment he learned that you know dressing the part plays a huge part in how people perceive you 
And that also happens outside the courtroom as well. I mean, people shouldn't judge you by what you wear or what you look like. But I mean, hey, that's the world we live in, y'all. So back at the house, Dream is saying how this law class is really bringing up, you know, all these old things with her dad. And so um, she's talking to Frida about it. And she's saying, like, um, do you think the absence of a dad can kind of affect your relationships? And Frida opens up about, you know, when they were younger and the mom and uh, their mom would always get into it with the stepdad and they would leave. And whenever they would come back, like the stepdad kind of treated them differently from their brother and sister. And was just saying how, like, that really affected them in a negative way. And Dream Doll, you know, she mentions how her dad wants to have a relationship with her now because of, like, who she is and and what she has basically he's a gold digger but she was saying when she bought her mama a house in the car he had the unmitigated gall to ask her what you gonna do for me what you gonna do for me like what did you really form your lips to ask what she's gonna do for you how about she just pay you dust kind of like you know how you did her before she got famous like i don't really understand people you know, well, I ain't gonna say people. I'm gonna say, I don't understand these absentee parents. Like, they don't do Jack Diddley squat for you in those, you know, those really, those really important years. You know, those, those younger years, those years when you're developing and you're trying to grow into the person that you're gonna be as an adult. They don't really be there for that. But let you blow up, let you come into some real, real comfortable you know guap do people still say guap i don't know but i just said it coming to some real serious guap or something like that all of a sudden oh baby they know you oh baby they love you you just the best thing since sliced bread you just the best thing since 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 you just everything but why are you only coming around because of that and then when they try to put you on a guilt trip like what you gonna do for me what you mean what i'm gonna do for you i don't owe you anything all I needed was you and your time. And you couldn't even give me that. All I needed was a relationship with you. And you couldn't even do that. But you have the nerve. You have the audacity to ask me for something. You will wait on it. Oh my goodness. So it was Ray J, Frida, and Dream Doll all in the area at this moment. And Ray J felt, you know, the fact that both of them had these these rough experiences growing up see Ray J can't really relate to that because he had a you know what they call a nuclear family he grew up with his parents in the home so for him to see that he was just saying in that moment you know for them to rise above everything that they went through and to come out on top like he really respected it he really appreciated it and in that moment you know he felt like he really got to know them and you know I really like that moment you know, they bonded in that moment. They hugged. I was in my fields and I was getting too deep in my fields and I wanted to get out of them and that was enough for me. And so now we're going to move on. So, now see, Slim, I be trying with you. See, I don't be liking to call you Latoya Luckett's ex, but see, when you do stuff like what you just did, what I'm about to say, what you did, this is why I call you Latoya Luckett's ex. So until you do something better, I'm going to refer to you as Latoya Luckett's ex, okay? So Latoya Luckett's ex, then up and crawled in Dream Doll's bed. You heard me right. The girl walked in the room, and what he doing? He up in her bed. Why you in that girl bed? You done been curved, swerved, preserved, perturbed, every other laverved, and like, bruh, what are you doing? When are you going to get a clue? Buy a vow and take the hint. She don't want you, Splendid Daddy Slim. The girl don't want you. I don't know how many other times she got to say this. Does she have to draw a picture? Does she have to, does she have to use flashcards? Does she have to write it down? Does she have to get an airplane and write it in the sky? Baby, her don't want you, okay? She don't. Let it go. Be like Elsa. <sighs> Anywho. So the group starts working on the mock trial, State versus Gray. Ray is going to be co-counsel for Officer Gray, the officer who I'm pretty sure is guilty, but um, 
even though he's an imaginary person, I'm, they're still guilty, but whatever. Big Frida is the defense attorney. Lamar and India are the prosecuting attorneys. And this should be something to see. Like, for real. Like, India getting up there, and she don't really like talking. But the fact that you're the prosecuting attorney, you really got to run your mouth and know your stuff. And Lamar, Lamar, he's really tall. Really, really tall. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Lamar and India are the prosecuting attorneys. And yes, India, honey, you're going to have to get up there and speak in front of the people. So I'm going to need you to do your breathing and whatever else you need to do. Do your mama say, mama sa, mama kusa. Do your nam yo renge kyo. You can do your whatever. Because, um, yeah, we don't want your, your heart sinking to your butt as you've said so many times. We don't want that to happen again. So Dream is going to be Officer Gray. Nini is going to be the witness to the officer. And Splendor Daddy Slim is going to be the witness for the prosecution. So Lamar asks, well, was the kid black? And Ray is like, well, there wasn't a race, you know, indicated. And Lamar was like, but it's always about race. This is America. Now, Lamar don't say too much stuff that I agree with. But you know what? He had a point. It seems like everything is about race. You know, this is America, you know, so India mentions that, oh, I see you going for the emotional side and, and you, you're really going to make people feel it if you go that route. Let me find out Lamar really smart on the low low. He's trying to he's trying to play it cool and calm and then he's just going to slide on in there so he can get that A plus. Let me find out. Let me find out Lamar. Let me find out. So Ray J is in Rayville doing all these theatrics. I could have sworn that boy mentioned something about Obama. He could pretend like like he's Obama. Or we could do something with Obama. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what Obama has to do with this. But be free to sit there looking like, man, if you just don't sit down. Like, what does all this have to do with whatever? And he's all, boom, bow. And we can do this. And, and we can hang from the rafters. And, and we can do somersaults. And we can stand on our head. And Big Frida had enough. Big Frida was like, man, look, if you don't calm down, because look, you ain't about to play with my grade. Because I came here to do my stuff. And I don't know what you came here to do, but I came here to do what I had to do when I had to do what I had to do. And I'm going to do what I do. And I'm going to make sure that you do what you do, too. Because you ain't about to mess up my grade. Okay. Okay, so the free ain't gonna go off like that. But baby. McFreed was irritated and I was kind of irritated too, because it's like, okay, everything doesn't have to be a joking time. Everything doesn't have to be all silly and fun and games. Like at some point you gotta take things seriously, buddy. So the next morning, Ray J is outside and Splendor Daddy Slim. Yes, Splenda Daddy Slim. Ain't no sugar daddy, cause he can't even take the hint that Dream Doll don't want him. So from here on out, there will be no Sugar Daddy Slim. You are Splendor Daddy Slim until you can take a hint. So he comes out and they just start talking about random stuff. And he mentions vacationing and being with the kids. And now Ray J feels it's the time to open up about his situation. So Ray J just talks about, you know, the thing with uh, he and Princess. And he just feels like, you know... Basically, he feels like there's no hope and she's been pushing, wanting a divorce and and everything like that. And Splendid Daddy Slim brings up the fact that, you know, everyone's marriage goes through a tough patch. Everybody has a point where, you know, it's really, really hard and marriage is a serious thing and you just got to, you know, work through it. So he asked him, would he consider counseling? And, you know, Ray J is like, you know, he's just really torn between staying in school for the whole experience of leaving to go be with his family and you know i can understand that you know you're at a crossroads and you just try to figure out what you need to do and it seems like a whole lot going on at one time you know i can i can, I can feel him on that one so hopefully he can come to a conclusion on what he needs to do and hopefully he can he can come out of this dark funk that he's in because as annoying as ray can be I'd rather see him happy and cheerful than, you know, all down and out like what he is. So we cut to the next scene and some some random dude that Dream ain't heard from since Valentine's Day. I don't know when this was filmed, but I'm assuming it had been a while from Valentine's Day. But some dude 
that she hadn't heard from since Valentine's Day pops up on her phone that she all skinny and grinning and did 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 and India's like that's who like girl and Big Frida was like man that's a groupie so Dream expresses that she has trust issues from her childhood and she has a hard time being vulnerable with men then she opens up even more and says how she wants a family and she always thought that you know she would have her let me see how she said it like uh just say i think she said like a shopping cart moment or a basket moment i think she said a shopping cart something like that but basically she always thought that she would have this moment being in a grocery store and she would run into this person and they would meet and then later on down the line get married and all that now this happens but most of the time this kind of stuff just happens in um you know movies but i'm guessing she was just using that you know as a um i think she's just using that as an example i i really don't i really hope she wasn't really thinking that was you know really really going to happen but she said she always had this in her mind that you know she was going to meet someone in the grocery store and because this hasn't happened you know she's considering just going to a sperm bank and uh and having a baby that way because she's saying you know she wants to have a child she wants to be a mom she wants her mom to have a grandchild and she says that she's damaged and when she said that they hit me because honestly if you're damaged a baby won't, won't help fix you sis in order for you to be all that you need to be for that baby you got to make sure you're whole you got to make sure you're healed you got to make sure you're in a good place because if you're damaged and you're not fully healed from the trauma and the pain that you experienced in your childhood all that's going to resurface and you're going to transfer that onto your child and the cycle will continue and continue and continue before you bring any kind of life into the world you got to make sure you're in the right space you're in the right head space to take everything that comes along with that that's just my two cents but i mean people gonna do what they want to do anyway so i'm just throwing that out there but she figured because you know her mom did it with um, i think she said three kids she figured she could do it too but the difference is your mom did it with three kids because she didn't have a choice in the matter i'm assuming you have a choice you don't have a baby yet so why would you bring a child into something just to kind of i don't know to kind of pacify you or to kind of maybe give you a little healing or to try to you know i don't know kind of bandage a wound that you haven't really taken care of like don't don't do that like just because your your mom was a single mom and she did it with three kids it may have looked easy but i'm pretty sure it wasn't and i'm pretty sure if she had a choice in the matter she wouldn't have done that on her own like what she did like you have a choice sis like just make the right one that's that's just me so lanithia is back uh, nene don't ever leave me again because you my friend in my head okay so she's back from checking on her stuff in georgia and then she opens up by losing greg <sighs> this was a heavy one for me because greg was like the big bro the cool uncle he was like everything and, and to see her really open up and be vulnerable and like she said she felt a ways after greg passed because she was like how dare the world move on and like greg's not here anymore i don't really think she's fully grieved over her loss and i'm i'm i still have her in my thoughts and prayers over that because that got to be a hard thing to be with somebody that long and then oh child I, I can't so the next day they're heading to a dude ranch and i need to get the name of this ranch because i want to go i want to go to the ranch i'm gonna dress up in my cute little hat and my cute little jeans and my cute little boots now i don't know if i'm gonna ride on nothing because i don't want to be smelling like the horses but i want to go and stand in front of them and be cute and take pictures i want to do that can i do that i might have to go back and get the name of it but yeah they're going to a dude ranch yeehaw y'all yeehaw so they get on horses 
and it's very apparent that half of these people have never ever been on a horse the only one they've ever been on is probably the little one that's in the front well it used to be in the front of walmart that you ride for a quarter that's probably the closest they've ever been to a horse so everybody gets on their horse and knees looking like Mm, mm, I don't think I want to ride on this horse. Do I have to ride on this horse? Because uh, I'm not feeling this. She is me and me is she. I probably wouldn't get on it either. You're not going to take me and go ride off into the sunset. You're not going to throw me every which way but loose like a little rag doll. You're not about to drag me from here to over yonder. I don't think so. No, sir, Mr. Ed's little nephew. No, sir. You're not about to do it to me. So Nini asks if she can drive the wagon, and that's what she ends up doing, driving the wagon and leaving the horse alone. So Ray J starts talking about, um, yeah, so the guy who's with them asks everyone if they're ready, and Ray J starts talking about, does a bear poop in the woods and wipe his butt with a bunny? I guess that meant he was ready. I'm not sure what a bear and a bunny had to do with anything, but um, come on, bro. Like all the bears I know use Charmin anyway. Like what bear uses a bunny to wipe their butt? Come on, they have evolved. Okay, don't play with them. So they go ahead and ride their horses over to the hoedown, and there's crawfish and there's zydeco. And as a Louisiana native, I feel a kind of way that Texas always gotta jack us and try to take all the stuff we be doing. Like, why y'all gotta do our stuff? Like, crawfish is a, is a New Orleans thing. The zydeco, that's a Louisiana thing. Like, why? And then, not just that. That ain't the only stuff y'all be taking. Y'all even took Mardi Gras. Why y'all have to take Mardi Gras? Y'all got Mardi Gras and Galveston and stuff like, man, come on. Come on, y'all know the real Mardi Gras is in the end though. Like, why y'all be doing that? I mean, I'm so glad and I'm so flattered and I'm so honored that y'all like to do the stuff that we be doing. But baby, y'all ain't got to do everything that we be doing. We don't be down there riding on horses and roping cows and wrestling chickens and doing all that kind of stuff. Cause that's your whole thing. Why we can't have our stuff and y'all just have y'all stuff? Why y'all always got to take our stuff? But anyway, so they go ahead to the little hole down and they're playing the music and everybody's getting down with the get down and Ray J's having a moment. It looks like he literally was having a breakdown in this moment. So he's out there and he's just saying, you know, show me a sign. Let me know what I need to do because I'm just at a loss. I just don't know what's going on. And I felt for him because I guess, I don't know. I don't know if it's music that set him off or what. But when they got back to the house, he was saying with him being from Mississippi, I don't know if Mississippi had to do with anything, but I was just rolling with him. I, I, I let him talk. I was like, okay, baby, go ahead. I'm going to just listen. I don't know what Mississippi got to do with this, but go ahead and have your moment. So he was just saying with his family being from Mississippi and the music and the togetherness, it just, it just kind of hit him in a way. And he really wants his family to be together. And he just feels like in this moment, being with his family is more important than being there and he decides to leave for a little while now if somebody is leaving for a little while they're not gonna pack up all this stuff they're not gonna have all this stuff waiting for them at the door they they're not gonna do that they're just gonna have like maybe a bag or two and the rest of their stuff still gonna be in the room nah baby he had that stuff packed and ready to go and Dream's like, okay, but what are you going to have here? He's talking about three jackets. So you just going to wear three jackets when you come back and you send everything up? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, in, in the space that he's in and with everything that's going on, I don't know if 3J going to come back. I don't know. But yeah, that's how that ended. You saw, you know, him walking off into the moonlight because it was already dark and all his other bags were still waiting on him. I guess someone was gonna bring him to wherever he was going and we're left with the cliffhanger hanging from a cliff and that's why it's called cliffhanger. And yeah, so we're left to wonder, is he gonna come back or is he not? Is Splendor Daddy Slim gonna finally catch a hint? and stop being a stalker and leave Dreamed all alone. Is India gonna realize that as long as she's in school, she's gonna have to talk and speak in front of people? Will Lamar ever 
understand the importance of soap and water. I guess we'll get all these answers next time on Dragon Ball Z. Nah, <laughs> y'all know I'll be joking with y'all. But nah, so that's the end of this. So have y'all seen the newest episode? What do y'all thought? You think Ray J gonna stay? You think he gonna come back? You think uh, that tall dude gonna stop being a stalker? What y'all think about this trial? Who y'all think gonna win? What side you think gonna win? I wonder if they're gonna get a prize or something. I don't know why, but and then again, with judgments, Lady Man, they probably won't. But yeah, so that's it. Those are my thoughts on episode five, Back in the Saddle. I want to thank y'all so much for watching. And this lovely tea that I am rocking right here is another one of my manifest dopeness because whatever your mind thinks, I mean, it can come to be. If you can think it, you can have it, you can live it, you can breathe it manifestation is what it is manifest dopeness you can create the life that you want just by living it and thinking it and you put out the positivity the positivity will come back to you and yeah so manifest dopeness is one of my creations i will leave the link in the description if you're interested in grabbing one of your own i will also list the code down for you because if you saw this review long enough to see me talking about this then baby you deserve a discount because you family and you here and we here we all together so this is available in different styles different colors you can grab one for you 10 for your people you could grab one for your dog if you want to I thank you in advance for the support and as always thank you all so much for watching this review make sure you like share comment and subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss future reviews like this one and i'll catch y'all on the next one all right peace